So in my last video, I went over a little bit about how I use Elastic Audio on Pro Tools. I was using it on the loop. And I asked you guys, did you want me to do a video on it? And a shout out to everybody that left a comment. So today I want to go over a couple different loops and I'm going to show you guys how I use Elastic Audio on Pro Tools. So let's get right into it. All right, so I got this guitar loop. I'm going to play for you guys. It's like this. All right, just something simple. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go right here uh, on your channel. So we got different settings. You got polyphonic. Polyphonic is good for like more complex material, like full instrumentals or sounds that are a little bit more complex in the harmonic content that it has. Uh, rhythmic is rhythmic better for drums uh, more than anything. Uh, monophonic is better for like single note instruments or like vocals. Um, in Verispeed, it, it actually changes the uh, pitch and the, the tempo of uh, whatever source that you're feeding it. And we're not going to worry about Melodyne and X-Form for this video. We're just going to be going over those four. So first thing we want to do, let's set this to polyphonic. And when you actually turn on the Elastic Audio, I'm gonna show you guys. So if we go here and we change the tempo, so it's at 95. Let's say we want to change the tempo to 100. Or let's just say 105. We'll just do something drastic. 105. And let's hit play. You'll notice it actually didn't do anything. It actually didn't change it. We can even change it to 85. The, now the starting tempo was 95. Let's change it to 85. It didn't do anything. So we're going to go back to 95. And beside the elastic audio setting that you choose, there's a button right to the left of it. Uh, samples and ticks. You want to make sure you change this to ticks. Anytime you're, you're using elastic audio on a track, you want to make sure that's on ticks. Now when we change it to 105, we're sped up. We can change it to 85. So you want to make sure that's always turned on when you're using Elastic Audio. Uh, and see, so the uh, polyphonic, this this particular um, setting right here, it, it plays with the transients a little bit. So it, let's say you got some weird art, artifacts going on in the sample. You can go in here and you can tweak it a little bit to make it sound a little bit better. But it doesn't always get it all the way right. I'll be honest, you can't. you can only stretch it so far to where it just starts sounding crazy. One thing I, I have found is that uh, it does better at speeding up material than it does slowing it down, to me anyway. Uh, let's listen to it 85, and we'll just play with this setting to see. Let's, let's take it to like, uh, let's see what, so the default is 40. Let's just take it up and see what it sounds like. Tell you what, we'll make it extreme. Now let's take it all the way to, to the other side. So you can see uh, the effect that that setting has. It just it just plays with the transients or it follows the transients a little bit uh, better. Uh, I think this button actually it will even help it a little bit more. Let's see. Yeah, so that even helps helps it follow the transients a little bit more. So you can use that polyphonic polyphonic on this guitar. And let's let's see what the rhythmic sounds like. That's 105. Let's slow it down to 85 again. The decay rate on the rhythmic setting, it controls how fast the transients fade out. So it's not very good on, on guitars, I'll be honest with you. Rhythmic, like I say, is more so for drums. I got a drum loop example we're going to go over, but just for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you guys what it does uh, to a guitar loop. All 
let's take it all the way down. That's rhythmic. Let's go to uh, monophonic. Let's take it to 105. Monophonic is always, anytime I'm looking for the perfect setting for a sound, it always seems to be the worst and it always has some weird things going on with it. But uh, those are uh, the settings. And then let's go to Vera Speed. We'll take it back to 95. I'm gonna go to 105. So like I said, very speed, it affects the pitch and the time. So let's go back to 85. All right, so you can see, let's go back to 95 and then let's take it back to, we'll just take it back to monophonic. So if you right click and go to elastic properties, what you're gonna find is you have another, some other properties that you can use when it comes to the elastic audio. You got source length. Now source length is just gonna change the timing of it. So if we go half, it's gonna basically half the uh, speed it up. So I'll play it. And you can just go it, it'll knock it all the way down to it's just a, a, a bleep. So you can kind of get creative with it if you just want to experiment with sounds and do something crazy. We can also slow it down. So you could do some crazy stuff when you... A lot of this stuff may not be usable, but sometimes you, you you can experiment with sounds and come up with something that just, it just sounds different, something that sounds crazy. We could also change the key. Like sometimes you might have a sample, let's say you got a sample and you're like, man, that sample would sound dope in a particular song, but the key is off or you, know, you need to change the key so it fits in with what you're doing. You can change the key. So we're gonna pitch this down. I'm pitch it up. I'm just taking them an octave up, but you you can, you know, you got everything in between that. So yeah, you can experiment with samples or guitar loops, piano loops, whatever, and get some crazy stuff. So I got that guitar loop, but I also got a drum loop and a um another full track I'm gonna go over, but let's go to this drum loop. So the drum loop is, sounds like this. So just something simple. Like I said, you wanna make sure when you turn on the elastic audio to the left, you got that button that says samples and clicks. You wanna make sure you, ch I meant samples and ticks. You wanna make sure you change that to ticks. And let's just slow it down to 85. Let's go a little bit more drastic. Let's go to 75. You know, polyphonic actually doesn't sound too bad with that. Let's try rhythmic. That don't sound too bad either. Let's go to monophonic. Like I said, monophonic for whatever reason is always the worst out of all of them. Uh, Vera Speed. So yeah, polyphonic actually sounded the best on this particular loop.
and and this was the original just so you guys can see compare how it slowed it down by 20 i mean we took the BPM down by 20. That's crazy that it still sounded so clean. But it usually works better with drums. I'll be honest with you. It does work better with drums. But let's play it at 95 again. Let's just try speeding it up. Let's go to 110 and see. Let's try rhythmic. So you see, it just works better. I feel like Elastic Audio always works better with drums, just period. It's just always better. Uh, so that's that's drum loops. Now let's go to this is a full track. This is a this is a beat, one of my beats. All right, same thing. We're going to let's turn it on polyphonic. You know, change this to ticks. And the, the original tempo is 140. Uh let's let's just try it at 130 and see what what it sounds like. Uh, let's try rhythmic. Right, they got some weird stuff going on. It's so weird. Monophonic is so weird. Very speed usually works because it's changing the pitch and the time. So it's not, I guess it's not having to work as hard when it's doing both of them. Let's listen to it. Let's go back to polyphonic. Let's put the tempo back to 140. Let's just see how it works with changing the pitch. Let's take it down like five semitones. So you can see the the problems it has with more complex material. We'll just try rhythmic one more time. As you can see, Elastic Audio, it will allow you to stretch and do some crazy interesting things with your audio, but it does has have its limitations. Like you can only stretch it so far and it works better on individual instruments. You can do some things with full tracks. I think it, it, it works better if you're uh, using very speed. Like let's say you wanna change the pitch and the timing of the full track. I think it works better that way. Just using it on the full track, you're gonna run into some issues, some problems as you can see. It, it just doesn't work as well uh, on that stuff, but I'm doing more extreme examples, you know, changing the BPM by 10, that's a lot, uh, or reducing it by 10, that's a lot. So we did it a little bit extreme. So if you're not, if you don't have to go that extreme, you can get a, away with a lot when it comes to elastic audio and getting it to fit to your vision, unless your vision is super crazy like that. But you might like that. You may want to go in there and experiment and, and speed up a sound and do something crazy with it. and make it a, a totally different type of sample but anyway i just wanted to show you guys this real quick just a quick overview of elastic audio and how i like to use it but i hope this video was helpful to some of you guys if it was don't forget to hit that thumbs up also if you're not subscribed to the channel i would love for you to subscribe and ride with me on this journey all right i'll catch you guys on the next one